All right, everyone. I'm Brian here for Disc Golf Examiner, and we're back for another episode of Plastic Picasso with our old friend Marmoset and a new face to the uh, podcast, to the series, uh, Don Freeman from DFX Discs. How are you guys doing today? Good, man. Woo. Thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. It's steamy here. Hope you guys are staying safe and uh, enjoying the summer as much as you can while you're out there. <laughs> so, Don, Don Freeman, uh, as a fan of MVP myself, I know you from the, the boards and the internet. We've never met in person. This is our first virtual meeting. Uh, tell our fans here at Disc Golf Examiner about DFX Discs. Sure. Uh, what, what you're all about, what's your philosophy, and... Uh, what kind of stuff are you offering? Yeah, so the main philosophy is basically that I saw a, a niche market that really wasn't being utilized. Uh, obviously, MVP Disc Sports is the top of the top when it comes to stamping discs. Uh, they can do three colors. They can do pretty damn good coverage. Uh, and what I noticed is that the, the releases from the brands themselves, of course, have to fit a certain image. They have to fit the branding. Um, the independent releases are extremely awesome, but a lot of them weren't using the capabilities of MVP like they should be or like they could be. I, I shouldn't say should because there's mm -hmm. a lot of art out yeah. there that's absolutely outstanding that's really laid the groundwork for a lot of what I'm doing. Uh, so in reality, I couldn't be doing this without uh, you know, people like Zam, who have been doing this for, shoot, over a decade, maybe 15 years. <laughs> uh, I mean, there's really a lot that that I got to see without actually participating up front. Uh, so, uh. so what DFX is all about is is putting some absolutely crazy art onto solid looking discs. Uh, of course, we do limited runs. We don't exactly have the firepower to go out and do 2,000 discs at a time. Uh, so everything mm -hmm. is basically limited right now. In the long run, maybe we'll see something else. Uh, but what's great is that I have the power to filter the art as I see fit, uh, work with MVP to make sure that we're putting foils on there that'll pop, that'll make people really enjoy the discs. Mm -hmm. uh, and really, that's the, the basic mindset of it all. Uh, so we launched dfxdiscs.com about a month ago. Uh, still working on loading a lot of inventory. With COVID, you know, we've, we've had a lot of delays here. Yeah. Uh, we're hoping that these uh, stop, but, but in reality, I think the rest of 2020 is going to be a challenge for all of us. At least, yeah. No, definitely. And I remember talking to you, I think it was a year ago, you randomly messaged me out of nowhere when I was complaining <laughs> about a monthly subscription service that's very popular. Uh, <laughs> and not, not complaining, just, just uh, figuring out what to do with the disc that I don't throw or trying to figure out what parts of the art I really liked and which ones I wanted to keep and series I wanted to collect. And you brought up... Uh, the idea of a monthly subscription series focused on the awesome art and a year ago, it, it had to have been a year ago or so. And I said, I think that's awesome and it'll work. I hope it happens. And then what, a few months ago, <laughs> you messaged me that it was happening. So <laughs> tell folks about the limited, uh, series. Yeah. So it's, the taken, limited a, club. it's taken a long time to get going. Um, in reality, there's, there's a lot of reasons. Most of them are my fault. Uh, you know, we welcomed a, a second baby into the world in February, so I had a, a, some extra exciting times since since then. Yeah, um, and we just had ours too. So yeah, both... that's awesome. That, oh, that's so <laughs> Luckily, awesome. you got in. You got in before the corona. Ours was like right at the height of it. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, it's super unfortunate. I, I'm very glad that we were beforehand. I would not want to switch places no, with you there. Um, yeah. So yeah, you're you're talking about some other subscriptions. There's a lot out there. Uh, and yeah. what I think that I, I'm doing is, again, filling a void that hasn't been filled yet. Uh, the goal is not to run a thousand discs a month. The goal is not to uh, give you a, a T-shirt and a disc with the same old artwork every month. The goal is to create something absolutely new that nobody has seen before. Uh, if you want to collect it, great, collect it. If you want to throw it and throw it into a pond and then get another one, that's fine too. Uh, it's really whatever you want to do, uh, but we're going to set it up and, and mail the disc to you as if you're collecting it. So it's going to have a numbered sticker on it. It's going to have a certificate of authenticity. It'll come in a collector bag. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Nice. If you want I saw your Golden to, Goose stickers for your variants. That was very cool. Those still exist. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't want to share too much, but yeah, those still exist. They, they will be cool. out in the wild. Uh, customers love them. So really, yeah. if, if customers weren't the ones pushing it, I, I probably wouldn't do them. Um, gotcha. But, but everybody much, loves how, them so How much, much are you... What's the cost uh, for the monthly subscription? Uh, 25 bucks. So 25 bucks, 24 99 uh, Currently, we can only accept credit cards, debit cards. In the future, hopefully, we can do PayPal, GPay, Venmo, something like that. Um, so 25 bucks gets you a, a disc mailed to your door. You can have as many or as few as you want. Uh, <laughs> they ship around the 15th of the month. We have already shipped out this month uh, a little bit early. Uh, people were getting a little bit overexcited, and I had some time on my hands. So <laughs> we, we just kind of went with it. <laughs> Overexcited is good. Uh, th that's great. I'm glad that it has taken off. I've seen a lot of people say that they are subscribing to it. So that's, that's great. I, I hope your numbers are working out. And I hope uh, with this video, we, we can double it so more people get great discs <laughs> in their hands. And speaking of which, let's kick it over to Marmoset real quick, who is doing the first, the first disc in the series. You were the first disc in Sully self-portrait series. So you're just the first at everything. I get well, it. Okay, cool. <laughs> I, I made sure I was the first in Sully series because I saw the lineup of artists after me, and I, <laughs> I didn't want to come <laughs> after. Follow him. Mike said, right, "Hey, who wants enough. to go first? I was like, "Ah, let me go." <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. So, speaking of going first, you're going to have to go first in pronouncing uh, the name of the stamp. Uh, I've studied and studied. I've read up a little bit on some of the South American gods and things like that, but I do not know how to say this. So can you uh, tell our fans what the name of this stamp is? Talk a little bit about it and uh, like the meaning behind it, kind of. Before I describe the stamp, I feel like I should mention that Don wanted to do an Aztec theme. And oh, okay. so cool. when when we were trying to figure out how to do an Aztec theme, what is most unique about the Central American cultures, whether you're talking about the Aztecs or the Mayans or some of the other ones, it's really how their, their culture was driven by the, the many deities that they recognized. And so we came up with the idea of making this first stamp depicting Huitzilopochtli, their, their sun god or war god. Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> I said it once. Can we just record or dub it over? I heard. <laughs> we we okay. We 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 teleportly. Gotcha. We yeah, the, the... We low pochtly. Easy. Okay. Yeah, that's what yeah. it looks like. All right. Number so one. <laughs> if you if you want to know how to pronounce it, the the only reason I know how to pronounce it is because on the Wikipedia page, right up at the top, ah. there's a little button you can click for pronunciation. And there's gotcha. a very Central American sounding guy that says, <laughs> so that's, that's the only reason I know how to say it. So what's his story? Um, I don't know. I think he's just a voice actor that lives in Central America. Ha 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 ha. No, the <laughs> Huitzilopochtli is, uh, he is one of the main gods of the Aztec society. One of the, the most famous Aztec pyramids that you see and when you Google like Aztec culture, you'll see Tenochtitlan, the, the uh, city with, mm -hmm. the, with the stepped pyramid. Yeah. Fascinating culture, fascinating city. If you get a chance, read up on it. I'll, I'll just hit the high points here. That stepped pyramid represents a mountain. And Huitzilopochtli was worshipped at the top of that mountain. And his sister that he dismembered and threw down the mountain was... <laughs> honored at the uh, bottom of that uh, stepped pyramid. But okay, that's, that's a whole different that story. I have heard that, that uh, myth or you know, story before. Okay, that, that rings a bell. Great. Okay. I did not put his dismembered sister into this one, <laughs> but hey, he is we'll... holding a human heart. Yes. <laughs> He's got a human heart. <laughs> okay, so, great. Yep. Reading about the culture is a little bit surreal because it's so much different than our current culture, right? And, I mean, you can, it, it's almost like stepping into a different world. Like, oh, they think this and they think that and this is how they dealt with these situations. It's crazy. I really, 
recommend that people <laughs> do some research on their own and read more about this because you can only put so much into a stamp. But we no, was he's the god, the sun god, and he's the god of war, and that's that's kind of the two main roles he fills. So in Aztec culture, they believe that every day the sun came up because it was chasing the moon away. Okay. And then the moon would come up because it was chasing the sun away. And then the sun would come up to chase the moon away. And so to make sure that the sun came up every day, because the sun's a vital part of culture, right? They're, they are an agrarian society. They need sun for <laughs> crops and whatnot. So to make sure that that life-giving, important sun came up, every single day they did human sacrifices so that the essence of the sacrificed person would be donated to Huitzilopochtli mm, and okay. give him power to help him in his battle. Is that sort of how like we sacrifice discs into the, the bumble and into the, <laughs> the ponds every day? Is that what you no. do, Brian? I just, I just temporarily rest mine in the bottom of the basket. That's as, that's as far I as I haven't go. got to play disc golf since March. I've been oh, wow. doing the best I can to quarantine with the baby, and I have not. Today, I took the baby and the wife out to a new little six-hole course, uh, just to get out, and that was the first time I played since March. But so today, back to the. I don't thing. know about yeah, Pennsylvania, <laughs> but in Virginia today felt absolutely amazing. Like it very have nice here. Day. Yep, and so I noticed the main elements of the stamp, like a very prominent element, is the, the little hummingbirds, which are very cool. I love birds. Uh, dude's got a snake staff, and I'll throw up some artwork over here, you know, while we're talking about it. But uh, yeah, really cool. I like the way that the main foil is for the most part like I, I know there are variants but like i see some really cool stock foils and don i know you mentioned working with them to make sure the foil combos are good and i've noticed that when you, people do that you you had the mythics series and you're still doing that you made sure the right foils were together and it looks great so could you talk a little bit about your process like one with marm and then two with mvp like how does that work do you tell them what to you do you ask do you beg do you do you have to like twist marm's arm for edits or like what how, how does this relationship work when you're doing something with two creative two creative angles and a business side you know so, so i guess we can start with marm um yeah 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 you know, we, we've grown together a lot over the last i'm going to say two years but frankly I don't, I don't know how long it's been anymore um, of course, we started out with the that first Leprechaun design early 2019, uh, yep. and it was my first time dealing with dealing with an artist when it comes to disc golf art, <laughs> uh, and I'm sure it was Marm's first time dealing with somebody like me. Uh, so <laughs> I, I'd like to think that I have an eye for design, uh, but when it comes to execution, man, I fall flat. Uh, I won't okay. rule out yep. maybe trying to get better in the future, but but let's face it. Um, I literally sent Marm a terribly drawn leprechaun on a paper plate, say, this is what I want. Let's go. Uh, and then, please of course... Please auction that. Do you still have it, please? Oh, auction yeah, absolutely it. still have it. Yeah, it's up in the kitchen <laughs> cabinet. Um, I, nice. think, I think oh, at I, one point... I thought you were putting that in a shadow box and hanging it on a wall with all the other collectors. I probably should, I like but I, I kind of feel like that's something that... I, I don't know. Somebody else might value more than I do. Uh, we'll see. That's, that's a like museum it. piece, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, with Marm, uh, the first disc we did, I feel like we went back and forth with revisions. I'm going to say nine times. It could have been 12. I'm pretty sure I have at least 10 files saved on my laptop still of, of progress. Uh, and there were a lot of things that, of course, I was learning through that process. And, and thankfully, Marm is an, an excellent educator. Uh, if I would have worked with anybody else up front, um, we, we probably would have strangled each other through the through the <laughs> interweb. But uh, fortunately, Marm and I only have so so long a hands or arms. Um, <laughs> so our process it has gotten a lot more streamlined now. Uh, this most recent right. disc, I, I would say, I, I'm sure it took Marm a ton of time. Uh, but when it came to revisions, I'm pretty sure it was, hey, man, that's awesome. Uh, that's, he nailed it on that's the first all I take. Have. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so what, what it, did you tell him? You just said, I, I wanted an Inca theme or I wanted a South no, American so theme? No, so I or? gave him, yeah, well, that was kind of a fun, fun story there because I gave him, I gave him four ideas. I said, these are the four that I think would fit. Um, 
and I gave him like five or six attributes about each disc, and I thought, okay, he's just going to run with what I said. Well, it turns out he took like an entire weekend and dug into Wikipedia and dug into all sorts of articles. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's now a historian <laughs> right. when it comes to he's, Aztec He's history. nothing if not diligent. <laughs> yeah, he's absolutely. He's definitely diligent. Uh, so I thought I was just giving him everything wrapped in a basket. He was going to be good to go. But no, he decided to, uh, to, to go deep on it. And I'm glad he did. It, it looks absolutely fantastic. Yeah. I, I can't be more happy yeah. with how it turned out. Uh, but our revision process before this disc kind of turned into let's see how many changes we can do until we both get pissed off and tired of it. At least that's how it felt to me. So with, with Death the, by a thousand edits. With the original <laughs> Leprechaun, again, we had like 10 edits. And at a certain point, we both said, you know what, it, it's got to be good. If it's not good now, it's not going to be good. Um, and yeah. we've, we've streamlined that since. Uh, of course, I've worked with some other artists who have also shed some light on the process uh, and maybe evening out expectations because... It's quite possible that my expectations were just so far out of whack uh, when, when working <laughs> right. with artists that, that uh, I needed a few slaps upside the head. Gotcha. Now, and what about working with the foils and stuff? Like, how, how you communicate directly with them with MVP or the how did do, how does that even work? Sure. So I, I I do communicate with MVP, but it's not really something you can guarantee. Uh, you know, they're, they're still the main. They seem to know what they're doing. They only right have there. what they have. So it's not like I can, can call them up and say, hey, man, I want a red holographic foil, and they can just go cook one up in the back. Uh, so they only have what they Gosh. have in stock. And there's, you know, there's a lot about foils that I don't know uh, that I hope to learn over, over the next few years. Uh, Same here. Same so what here. I can do it is, fascinates me. Yeah, what I can do is put in requests. And, and for these, it was more of a... Look, these are the color tones we want. We want a few that have holograms. We want a few have, that are more metallic. Uh, but these are the kind of the, the color combinations that we want. Uh, go ahead and pick out some foils that you think will work. Uh, Very cool. There, there's so many attributes to the foils that will, you know, some can only be used on premium plastics. They can't be used on Electron. Uh, oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Some, apparently that some just don't go well together. Uh, when you're talking about the, the, the amount of light refraction and whatnot you know there's been some yeah. trial and error yeah. fortunately we have a few combos that that are kind of tried and true and work really well but but a lot of this is guess and check uh, so when it comes to selecting the foils uh i can put in preferences and hope but it's not really something that we can control as as um, as marm and myself hmm. well that's cool that they even let you give preferences because it seems like when you ask for a pre uh, seeing the disc that you've put out before, the, the, some of the combos they put together are just like, oh, they look so good together. Why don't I see that on stock discs and stuff? You know what I mean? Like, they do such a good job with yours. I, I wish they could do that with everybody's, but I'm glad I'm well, glad we're getting it every month with yours too. <laughs> you know that that kind of goes back to the brands, though. You know they have they have an image to meet, and and you know, and it's different than yours. MVP yes, yes. and Axiom and Streamline are are extremely consistent in the way they present their discs. Uh, Absolutely. So they can't just go out putting rainbow on everything because <laughs> you know, jelly bean. It wouldn't jelly fit bean. what they're looking to do. Yeah, please no jelly bean. I, I, I if I <laughs> if I never saw it ever again, I'd be I'd be a pretty happy viewers. Guy. Just so you know, Don and I often rant to each other about jelly bean foil. I don't know why. <laughs> I just don't like it. He doesn't yeah. like it. So when we see it, we uh, laugh about it. Yeah, you know, a lot of the customers. Uh, that's love probably it. so. It's like when I get when I get fifty of them with jelly bean, I'm like, oh, okay, they'll sell, but I don't really want to keep any of them for myself. Right, yeah. they're just not for me. I, I get it. other people like. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, on my end for for the color allocation stuff, oh, a yeah, big yeah. a big part of what Don likes to do is he likes to run things in three color, and then later he likes to run it in single color. Yes, and, 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 like and sell that. it at a reduced price. And so that knowing that he wants to do that really guides how I set the mm. file up from the get go. So like I've got the black wireframe, mm. like a cell shaded uh, animation cell from a cartoon. And then you just end up dropping colors into the black outline so that when yeah, you yeah. remove the two colors, you still have the black outline. And that's pretty much the entire composition. But for this particular one, Huitzilopochtli has turquoise blue skin or green skin. 
in almost all of the paintings or depictions that we have from antiquity. And oh, then okay. on top of that, he was known for wearing gold. And so <laughs> good for like, I've got a black yeah. outline, I've got blue skin, and I've got gold embellishments. So <laughs> my decisions were pretty much made for this. And then it's just about <laughs> yeah. kind of trying to plan, well, I know they're not all going to be blue skin with gold embellishments. So how can we lay the colors out so when they get swapped to something that you wouldn't find in antiquity, it still works well. <laughs> And you get like the crazy foil combinations and the holographic and little glittery things popping up everywhere. You know, Marm, yeah, I always thought he, uh, I thought he just had rainbow skin. Is that not how it worked? I thought this was <laughs> him. How long? Means, yeah. Is this not him? <laughs> this is not. Oh this is how God. I read the story. Anybody, everybody that doesn't know, check out Marm's video or video channel, YouTube channel. Uh, Cause he does these really awesome videos where he shows his creation process of these stamps and it just shows you how much goes into this stuff. And I don't know I, if you guys know, but Marm has been putting out designs like crazy for Innova and Millennium, and they just seem to be coming out every other day. So Marm, you want to talk a little bit about what you got coming up? And like, I, I can't even keep track of everything, but if you want to <laughs> tease some stuff or if you just want to say that you got 10 discs coming out in the next few months, but uh, I've been seeing your stuff and it, it's just amazing. I like it. I want to see more of it. Yeah, thanks. I mean, I appreciate you saying that. While we're on the topic of Huitzilopochtli there... Oh yeah, before we leave. Well, not, not necessarily before we leave. This is a nice segue, <laughs> but if you like the Central American theme, stay tuned. You might see some more of that. <laughs> in um, this series... You mean in the, the limited series or anywhere? Okay. It could be a good. recurring right. theme. You know, one I, thing that I, I point, can either Brian. confirm nor deny. Right. <laughs> you know, Brian, it, it, we probably, if we continue something, it'll probably be within the limited series. I don't think it would be a general release. But D, a D, a, a, gotcha. But through DFX and like. It better be. Yeah, no. Yeah, but okay. <laughs> you got I'll drive out to Virginia. Lockdown. Well, yeah, we'll have to <laughs> exchange some blows. There we go. Yeah, so I wouldn't Mark, do what that you to got Don. Coming up? Oh, you wouldn't do that to him? No, 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 no. Cut and run? Um, <laughs> so there are basically two people that I do work for at this point. I have a contract with Don, and I have a contract with Innova. Nice. And then nice. for Don, that breaks down into I do like his general leases and I, I do his limited stuff and I do branding stuff for him. Uh, yeah, the new for, logo looks great. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, it's the, the little implied X using negative space. I really like. And then when you turn a logo sideways, it looks like a frowny face. <laughs> <laughs> and DFX so. is one letter before DGX alphabetically. So you guys got that going too. <laughs> Yeah, maybe we should. Right now, the color scheme is blue and gray. How, what do you? How do you feel about purple, Don? Oh, why not rainbow Dude, and hollow? Every <laughs> other channel's using it. <laughs> can, we, can we add a jelly bean <laughs> flavor to the DFX logo? Oh God! <laughs> yes, I'm gonna do that. I'm definitely gonna Photoshop that for this. <laughs> So but, what do you um, got? Do you got stuff on the horizon for anybody? Are you allowed to tell us about it, or is it all uh, hush hush? So, anytime I do a stamp for somebody, they get the rights <laughs> to unveil. Gotcha. So I can't give you any spoilers, but some of the recent ones, like this, is Don's. This is the the second <laughs> installation of the Leprechaun that we just released the other day, where he's squeezing an egg out of the goose. I love that. <laughs> I, I love having too, man. <laughs> man, I I told Marm. I said, Marm, let's do something that hasn't ever been done before. And he said, Okay, I'm gonna use the center sprue as a goose's butt, and we're gonna squeeze an egg out of it. I said, All right, man. That so be it. Let's go. It, it and worked I, well. So they told me. I think MVP told me that, or maybe I just didn't feel right about drawing an actual like little wrinkly sphincter. <laughs> 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 So I didn't, but it's great because like on the proton discs, they're clear. So you see like the little, you see, you see the little sprue behind it. I didn't have to draw it. MVP put it in there for me. That's so funny. 
Is it like right on the edge of what they would print on a disc? Uh, oh, they, they I, I out, think it's us. pretty close. Like you gotta, you gotta wonder. If I remember correctly, Don, didn't they tell you the only way we're gonna stamp this is if you put your logo on it very clearly so that everybody knows it wasn't us? <laughs> I can't this remember if that's MVP how the conversation this? went for this one or not, but that has those sentences have definitely been said by MVP before. It's reasonable. <laughs> yeah. Great. So uh, uh, we and then, did the leprechaun. Yep. Yeah, the leprechaun, and of course the the Mythics Hydra two two part set, the full cool. size and the mini. Those are Don's, and then bridging the gap between Innova and Don. This was back before my contract prevented this, but. I can't stamp on Innova discs for Dawn anymore. All my Innova stuff needs to be sold through Innova now. With but the exception of one Rhino. project, right? We get one more. Well, th this is grandfathered in. Yeah. Grandfathered. So I, I can I can still do this one because this was in the works before my new contract. Um, yeah, that's a sweet but, Rhino. Yeah, thanks. I, I really like it. I, I like Rhinos anyway, so I've been wanting to do a Rhino stamp for a very, very long time. I mean, this was my first go-to putter, so... Okay. Very cool. And that was back when the Rhino was new. And if you know when the Rhino came out, it <laughs> gives you an idea of how long I've been playing. <laughs> and then for... It was uh, but, um, <laughs> Another thing I've been working on for, for Innova is the Popular Zen series. So there's like the... Yeah, like every the stamp will have... Kind of? Yes, exactly. So like the Wraith, it's got... Two of the same thing, basically. One is right side up, one is upside down. But there are minor changes between each one. Like, and this this wraith no, is holding, yeah, this wraith is holding a flail, and this wraith is holding a sword. And there are other minor changes in there. And I've carried that theme through some of the other Zen series things I've done. Like this, this shrike is wrapped with thorns, and that one's wrapped so with barbed wire. I love it. And that. then I, I, I like them. Big, big stamps. I like them. Cover more, it with foil. <laughs> yeah. More Zen stuff. This was a US DGC disc. So this has special place. Uh, and then not everything I do for them is Zen. Like this is just a, a basically a stock stamp for the King Cobra. Hopefully that's coming <laughs> through on, on camera. And we'll then, throw it up if it doesn't. And then three last discs. The... Uh, the USDGC commemorative stamp for James Conrad, since he's our hometown hero. I got to oh, do man. that. And nice. then got to update the classic rock stamp because they molded it in KC Pro Plastic. Dude, and so, it's like, if I, if I ever go back to throwing non-gyro and streamlined stuff, my bag is going to be full of all these molds you put these stamps on. <laughs> like, it's all the stuff I used to throw. It's great. I think those classic rocks sold out in, what, an hour? It was incredibly fast. Yeah. They, yeah, it's such they a had, good mold. They had 300 up, and I, what they told me was they sold out in less than an hour after they announced yeah. that they were going live. Wow. So there is a restock planned. I don't have any special insight as to when that restock's going to happen, <laughs> but I'm assuming one or two weeks. And then because I can stamp for Innova, I can also stamp for the brands that are under the Innova umbrella. So yeah. this is one of my recent millennium releases this is a jls stamp for the jls and it's a fun my, that was my first fairway driver first 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 disc that i could ever flip was a jls That's oh, this awesome. is jls is <laughs> awesome they're, they're horrifically underrated in my opinion but i absolutely. absolutely love them good but yeah stuff, i've man. been busy like i <laughs> busy i feel like i'm guess. finishing <laughs> i feel like i'm finishing a week uh, a stamp basically every week or so Wow. Prolific. Very good, man. I can't wait to see some of the stuff. And what about you, Don? What have you got uh, coming out here? Uh, I mean, I know every month you've got something new coming out, but I think I saw that Marm or you just teased uh, a Hunter Hot Stamp that's yeah. coming out out of nowhere. Yeah, so we have three or four things coming soon. Um, with the way that COVID struck, it, it kind of pressed the pipeline back for everything. So now it's going to be an absolute fire hose of product. Uh, so we did do a, a really fun partnership with Jake Hunter. Um, 
I, I won't ruin any yeah, surprises, Donna, but they will be hitting. Is, the... is your camera all right, man? Yeah. Is your good. camera okay there? Yeah, yeah. So I have okay. I have the iPhone resting over the laptop now. Okay, sorry. We'll we'll go back to that. Uh, you can just start with your answer, and I'll cut it in. All right, cool. I just want to make sure it didn't <laughs> fall over. Uh, will gotcha. you ask it again? Because now I forgot. Yeah, no, definitely. You're I'm good. only pretty. I, I'm so not you... very smart. Right. Uh, so Don, tell me about what DFX has coming up soon. I think I saw the other day that you teased in your profile picture on Facebook uh, a Hunter Hot Stamp disc coming out. I, like, is that a limited release? Is that a regular release? What? I know you have something coming up every month. Uh, I'm sure you're working with some great artists. Anything you want to tell us about coming up? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, of course, we will have the one per month with, with DFX Limited. Uh, but in, in reality, we have a whole bunch more planned. Uh, with the way COVID struck, it, it's pushed back a lot of stuff that we were hoping to do in, in yeah. March, April, May. Uh, shoot, I mean, I, I was hoping to have Mythics, the, the fifth disc out, six months ago, five months ago. Uh, so oh, wow. It, it's really just pushed everything back. Uh, so we have something from John Dorn coming very soon. Uh, nice. I, I really don't know the timing. We'll see when, when MVP is ready for that. <laughs> Uh, the Jake Hunter project is ex oh I love that Dorn stamp yeah that that's my favorite misprint I've ever got is a John Dorn B uh, with the beaker it just looks so good and well I guess this will be our last conversation then if that's your favorite one but you know whatever <laughs> oh uh, okay <laughs> uh, no we, we have a big project with Jake Hunter uh, I, I hope it's his biggest one of the year but it hopefully uh, again hopefully won't be hopefully he'll be busier than that uh, we have around 300 discs so I don't know if I would call it limited uh, I, I won't say that we won't touch on it again in the future, uh, but we try to do a few things that haven't been done before. Uh, really excited yeah. to to get those. They actually arrive. Uh, well, they'll be here by the time uh, by the time this video posts. Uh, oh, okay. So, so it, it the, there's something a, really there. There I'm, is I'm something really very about... unique about this release that you haven't seen anywhere else. I will say that. Right. Oh. And that's the. I'm really excited about the Hunter release because. Don and I sat down together, well, virtually, and we basically <laughs> said, here's what you can do when you order custom discs from MVP. Like, this is a known entity. When We're now going to put these discs through Hunter, Jake Hunter. This opens up a whole bunch of doors. It can, we can now do this, we can do this, we can do this, we can do this. How do we address all of these things with Jake Hunter that we can't usually do with MVP? So and for, when for we actually announce, no, just, just so folks know, Jake Hunter is a guy who hot stamps this Hunter hot stamps. Uh, he does some really crazy stuff. So, uh, he so we're talking a about hot a guy stamper. who independently stamps. <laughs> He's the hot yeah. stamper. <laughs> he, so by, by his day job, he hot stamps random stuff like converse shoes, name tags, whatever. He's a hot stamper and he's bringing the expertise from his day job and applying it to discs. So we do our side to do, make pretty art pictures. And then he takes it and he just amps it up exponentially because of his expertise. You know, Jake has really turned this into a craft. Uh, that, that's what, how I would describe yeah. his work because it's, it's precise. It, it's incredible. And everything is one of a kind. So it, it feels like I get to work with two artists in one when we do partnerships like this. Absolutely. And, and it, yeah. it, as long as I can, of course, uh, you know, get these into the hands of, of, of customers, I, I see us doing plenty of more projects with Jake. Um, gotcha. The, and that's a regular one, release, not part of the limited series? That's no, just no, like, no, it's independent. Yeah, totally independent. Uh, not part of the limited series. Uh, how do they get that? So part of the reason I, that we wanted to work with Jake, uh, let's face it, if I have to order 50 of a single mold, that means only certain molds are going to get run. So one of the huge advantages yeah. of, of partnering with Jake is that I got to pick out 20 molds uh, that rarely get run, uh, oh, and we got to do nice. some pretty cool art on them. So some of them are out of production, some are new. Uh, you know, we have some volts in there, we have some NVs, of course, because if I don't run NVs, somebody's probably going to come to my door and, and <laughs> do me in. Um, I need another one. But Come we also on, have man. some, you know, I think we have some vectors. I think we have some ohms. Um, I was just going to ask, yeah, did you get any reactors too? I'll take one of all there three might of those be, I, There might be a dozen, <laughs> but there's not many. Uh, again, that's a yeah. great part of, of, of working with Jake mm -hmm. is that you can just send him 10 of everything and he'll make it happen. Nice. Very cool. 
Wow. Well, uh, that's a bit overwhelming uh, for my wallet. I don't. I'll have to do some budgeting over the next couple months. Obviously, <laughs> I am part of the group. I am part a paying member of the membership series, so I'm looking forward to getting that every month. I pretty much stop buying discs except for ones that I want to look at that are pretty. I have enough throwers, so for so some Brian, reason, playing disc golf. <laughs> so Brian, I'm going to put you in the hot seat now. Oh, geez. Okay. So, what would you want to see from DFX Ltd? Like if you if you're sitting there, so you just told us that you're not buying many discs, right? You're you're only you're choosing which discs yeah. you want to buy because you want them to look a certain way and just be like, oh yeah. What yeah. would make what would make that decision super easy for you? Like, uh, my big thing is cool foils and glitter. Uh, like um, I, I'm a drummer, so like I love glitter drums like that that glass glitter that they use on drums and i know mvp started to do some like party glitter and experimenting with some powders and stuff um that's outside of the stamp realm but that's that's what i really like but i think my favorite part of disc art is like i really like glass art and i feel like the glass art and the foil art is similar in the way that it's kind of fluid but static at the same time uh, like you can see motion in it while it's sitting still or while, you know, while you move it, the, the foils are, are changing. And I really like the cool little star foils, like the foils that have the little pictures and stuff in them. I notice I've seen some of that. Uh, so getting someone who really, I mean, obviously all these guys understand foil, but like, has anyone explored doing a full foil disc with MVP? <laughs> like th those disc craft full foil things, I... If I threw a buzz, I mean, I have nothing against a buzz. If I threw a buzz at some point in my life, I would buy one of those full foil discs because they're beautiful. So maybe yeah. you guys can see, or like, I mean, I know edge printing is, I know why you don't edge print. Like it's difficult and stuff, but you know, if you got guys that are doing these by hand, it might be cool to see some shiny gold rims or something, you know? You know, it's, I, I it's think funny you bring that up, Brian, because Don and I have had several discussions about ways around that i, I think we yeah, they're, are they're, heading they're... towards an arms race of stamping <laughs> I, I really do, do you know mvp <laughs> I, I hope that it's starting to get other brands attention you know you can see yeah. Innova and, and discraft with their two foil stuff and it, look it looks awesome it, the, yeah they did the edge printing with the claw marks and stuff I they did the edge printing up at discraft yeah uh, you know, and Paul McBeth money helps, right? Combos. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, the one thing Discraft has is they have, I mean, what, like 200 different foils. Uh, they have, you know, they have stars, they have wood grain. I mean, they have one that's a pile of hundred dollar bills. Like that is the coolest foil in the world. Uh, right. So, <laughs> so uh, of course, all of that stuff is, is new recently, but they still don't have that three foil that, that MVP has. Uh, so yeah. it'll be interesting to see what some of the other manufacturers uh, are, are doing to better their stamping abilities. I, I think that people are realizing that there is an untapped market there now. Uh, mm -hmm. And as, you know, as much as I kind of hate to say it, Paul Macbeth and Brody Smith are probably mm -hmm. exposing that greatly. Yeah, no, and here's my million dollar idea. Take it, do with it what you will. You remember <laughs> the hologram stuff from the 80s and early 90s, like the hologram toys and foil cards and stuff? Yeah. Whoever you mean like rub symbols? No, uh, that's Battle Beasts, close. Uh, but and Transformers, no, like, too. Yeah, but I'm talking about the, um, like, not lenticular printing, but where, it, I, what were they called? Visionaries? Visionaries, yep. I think they were called? Visionaries did it. And, okay, um, yeah. So whoever can figure uh, out, like, how to put a, an endless bottomless pit or, like, some really cool geometric designs that have that shifting lenticular look, I think that would be pretty neat. That's like a whole, I don't even know. That's probably not even possible. <laughs> like, probably not possible. But hey, that's what we're here for, Disc Golf Examiner, taking us to the edges of what's possible in disc golf. <laughs> uh, so before, before we say goodbye, thank you guys for your time. Um, before we say goodbye for the day, uh, anything you want to say? Uh, from us here at Disc Golf Examiner, I just want to thank you for your time, really. No, nothing for me. I appreciate you having me on. Uh, we, we've been talking about this for probably about a year, 
Uh, so it, I'm glad that's finally happening, and hopefully we can do another one of these in the near future. Yeah, next yeah. month. Absolutely. And for <laughs> me, I just want to thank a bunch of people. I mean, first of all, thanks to the people who are buying these discs, because if you're not buying them, <laughs> I don't get to make them. And Definitely. so I, I just truly appreciate everybody who is actively searching these discs out and buying them. And then, of course, thanks to Don for the opportunity to, to keep working with him. We hit it off immediately, and, I mean, I think we're doing some really fun stuff, and I think people agree with us. So I I'm, agree. I'm thankful for that. <laughs> and the, the third thing is thankful for DGX for giving us some airtime and looking into our process and, and helping people understand how much work we put into this, because this is not... This is not something we do on a whim. Everything is very <laughs> meticulously planned, thought out, agonized over, and we we put a lot of time and attention into it. And it's really not nice to, to, to <laughs> yeah, it's fun work, but it's still work. And and hearing the accolades that we get from from uh, customers and from people like DGX, I mean, it just makes it all worthwhile. So. I'm really thankful for what I have, and DGX, you're part of that. Brian, you specifically. Oh, oh I love you too, Mark. Don, I love you as well. Thank you guys so much for coming on today. Uh, I hope uh, nothing but the best for you guys and your families. Stay safe out there. And uh, until next time, keep banging those chains.